It's 7 p.m. here in Ventnor City, New Jersey, and our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., and this is Saturday Night with Car Edge, with your hosts, me, Ray, and, well, the guy that only owns one t-shirt, Zach. How are you tonight, handsome? For anyone who says, oh, they make all this money on YouTube, oh, no, we don't, okay, because I wear the same shirt every single show. I'm doing great, Dad. Happy Happy Saturday. Holy okay. Cow, it yeah, is Saturday. It is Saturday. How are you, Saturday. Yeah, I, 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 can I say I missed you? I missed you two days. I did not see you for two days. It was uh, highly unusual. Um, and, and so I am uh, just uh, damn glad to see you today. I am glad to see you as well, Dad. I love you very Good. much. We are going to be in the chat significantly tonight. So please, any questions you have for us, tag us. Let us know. We will be spending time in the chat. Before we do, we must remind you, tonight's show is brought to you by us, caredge.com. If you want to skip the dealership, not deal with any of that hassle and get some serious savings, go check out caredge.com. We have our car buying service as well as our research tools and a myriad of free offerings as well. Let's talk about that. The car market, I think is in deeper trouble than the stats might be letting on. We're going to start here, all right? March data for the car market was surprisingly robust. It was surprisingly strong. The U.S. market rises 5.5% in March, which was up significantly from where I thought the market was going to be. And there was one brand in particular, yes. Ford, that yeah. was up 6.8% in the entire first quarter. A little bit shocking considering all the anecdotal data and evidence that we have of Ford and other automakers being in a, a really tough position, wouldn't you say? Well, you know, uh, we, we look at the numbers and, and perhaps we extrapolate different conclusions from the numbers that we see uh, than, A, the numbers that they might be sharing or how they would like to extrapolate their, their opinion of the, those numbers. Sales up 6.8%. Everyone put that in the back pocket. Now, Dad, when you go and you look at inventory levels, so yeah. we're looking now at the latest inventory data from Cox Automotive, day's supply. Day's supply is a measurement that is becoming more and more popular on the YouTube sphere. I actually just saw uh, Hoovy, Tyler Hoovy from Hoovy's Garage was doing a video that totally just uh, you know restated the data from CarEdge, which I thought was super <laughs> cool. Day's supply did, did he, how did long he, it would take wait, to sell did, all available inventory of a particular vehicle. Go for did, it. Did he give attribution? He did not. And Hoovy, I've been watching your videos. I even showed him with my dad like 10 years ago. So it would have been cool for the attribution, but we get it. Yeah. Business is business. Now that day's supply is how long it would take to sell a vehicle based on the current, uh, how many days it would take to sell a type of vehicle based on the current uh, inventory levels and how they've been selling traditionally. So forward sales are up 6.8%, right? Yeah. Yes. Riddle me this, Dad. How are how's Ford's day's supply then going from a 64 to a 78? And inventory levels are back up over half a million units for the first time in well, well, well over 18 months. I'm I'm just calling it right now, man. The numbers don't add up. Sales up, but days supply going up, inventory levels going up. <laughs> I'm gonna help. I'm gonna maybe, maybe, maybe they went to uh Maybe Jim Farley hit the hit the little button that said max production, uh, <laughs> and, mm. and and they're producing at the highest rates that they. No, um, well, I, I I just read that they're they're getting ready to ship one hundred and forty four thousand pickup trucks that have been sitting around. Uh, it must be max production. They must have, they must have gone to max production. There, there's like no time off. Nobody's getting any, and they're just producing cars like it's going out of style. That's got to be what it is. That's why the inventory's up. That's why the day supplies up. It can't be because the sales and the and the production don't match, could it? I don't know, man. The sales data saying, "Hey, everything's golden, everything's great," and then you dig in, just like you peel the onion back, just one layer. Yeah, that's all it takes is peeling the onion back one layer, and you can quickly see that inventory levels are not nearly uh, painting a similar story. They are actually getting worse. That's a, a you know, I, I think that's a, a universally understood fact. And I think that that's a, where these headlines can become a little bit misleading. All the sales numbers are looking fairly rosy, with the exception of Stellantis. They, they can't figure out a way to cover up okay. all of the trials and tribulations that they're facing. The inventory data is really where the true story unfolds. So forward yeah. inventory levels up significantly from a 64 yeah. day supply to a 78 day supply. And we'll spend some time on the car edge car search looking 
at different Ford vehicles and the day supply of those out there. But this is not only a Ford trend, Pops. Let me scroll yeah. down here. Unfortunately, over at Honda, day supply has gone down. Whoops, let's go up back up to the top right here for all Honda day supply has gone down to a 40 days supply from a 44 day supply. So Honda is one of those dealerships or excuse me, one of those brands where we have seen the day supply actually get tighter, but mm -hmm. if we come down here, Mazda about the same Hyundai Kia about the same Subaru down a little bit, Toyota down a little bit. It really does become clear that Ford is one of the outliers here where their inventory levels are growing, even as quote unquote sales are rising. I'm telling you, somebody hit the, the max production button. I don't know if it was by accident or, or on purpose, but, you know, they they are doing what they do well, which is uh, produce uh, 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 vehicles that have quality issues. Uh, that's what that <laughs> that's what they typically do well because as we have established over the course of time at Ford, quality is job none. No one seems to pay any attention to that. So if you're not going to pay attention to that, you might as well just keep producing as many vehicles as you can. And you know, on the Lincoln side of things, you're going to say to your dealers, do us a favor, put more cars in service loaner fleet so we can report more ve more vehicles sold and we can send you some more. Um, and if you're a Ford dealer, they're going to be begging you to take Ford product. So, yeah, their sales are up 6.8%. Their sales must have really tanked last year. Uh, yeah, yeah that'd be the only way the for sales to be up 6.8%. Yeah. yeah. So let's jump right here to, to tie it into something tangible for everyone that joins us here on the Car Edge channel on their Saturday night, which we appreciate from Selma. Yes. Prices are going up or down. I'm planning to buy a car soon. Well, Selman, we've got data on that as well. New vehicle average transaction prices dropped to lowest level in nearly two years, according to latest Kelly Blue Book estimates. So the market being effed, is really car dealers and automakers being effed. It is, and I think Igor sums it up really nicely here. The market is going in the right direction only in favor of consumers, not for dealers and original equipment manufacturers, the OEMs. And the Ford storyline of top line number looks great. Peel the onion back one layer. The inventory story looks bad. This well, is the reality. Well, you know, they, they, they dramatically increased the uh, Mach-E sales. Um, you know, but they they significantly lowered the price in order to do it. Um, so, yeah, if some of the sales are going up in many cases, it's because either incentives have gone up dramatically to uh, help the dealers sell the cars and help the consumers agree to buy the cars. We know, even though uh, people who follow this channel don't want to believe it, we know that. Average transaction prices have dropped significantly from their high point two and a half, three years ago when it was just under $50,000. And today, I think the average transaction price is down around $45,000. Um, we're getting closer, 47218 Okay. Um, so we know that, that, that prices are going down. We know that dealer profits are going down. Dealer profits are going down for two main reasons. One, the cost of financing their inventory that they have, which is known as floor planning, the cost of that has gone up because interest rates have gone up. And the other reason that their profits have gone down is because they've had to take shorter deals on the front end to be able to fit those vehicles into people's budgets. I yeah. I understand um, that nobody wants to believe that the prices are actually coming down. They have been coming down. I, I do accept that they're not coming down as quickly as customers would like, but they are coming down. The, the receipts are there. The, the, the lower dealer profits, um, the lower average transaction prices. We know that that it's it costs less today to buy that new vehicle than it did last year at this time. Yeah, definitely. The the big picture data shows it, and I want to jump to uh, CarEdge.com slash community. All right, if you go to the community forum over here on the left, there yeah. is a 
share my quote with Car Edge channel every single day. There are people sharing their quotes, getting car buying advice here on the community forum. And I want to also state giving car buying advice yeah. and negotiating recommendations. And we see it day in and day out. And a huge, huge kudos to Space as well as to um, Igor for their uh, commitment and, and hi you and others on the community forum. But we see deals all day long over on the community forum demonstrating that. And then you look at, again, the headline, new vehicle average transaction prices dropped to lowest level in nearly two years. That's good news. That's 100% yes. good news. And tie it back in, obviously, with the other headline that we were looking at, which is Ford's you know, sales being up 6.8%, but their inventory levels going up more than 6.8%. Yeah. All signs point to a continuation of this trend throughout the year. I think Q3 and Q4 of this year, Dad, are going to be unreal. I, I, the industry is going to be bursting at the seams with inventory. I, I, I foresee um, deals getting even better. And the other thing, if you can read the, the tea leaves or between them, um, you know, the Fed has pretty much indicated at this point that maybe we really shouldn't be expecting a, a, a reduction in the federal uh, reserve rates. So I, I don't know that we're going to see interest rates go down this year. Or it could be really late in the year when the, when it does. So in order for dealers to remain profitable, to relieve themselves of the inventory that they have, they're going to have to become more aggressive in how they eventually agree to sell the car. What they ask for it and what they sell it for, folks, are two different things. You can't get what you don't ask for, so they ask, hoping that they're going to get it. But many, many, many times, in most cases, they don't sell anywhere near what they're asking for. Um, so they will be aggressive in making deals. The manufacturers are going to be aggressive in their marketing and in their incentive programs to make it easier for the dealers to make the deals. And they already are. I just don't want to, I don't want to forget about that. Like they yeah. already are. Cause again, that's where the headlines are coming from. The, the, the only reason why new car prices have gone down to the lowest level they've been in two years is because of incentives. It's not like the MSRPs. I mean, we've seen, I think there are seven or eight vehicles that we've tracked that have had their MSRPs reduced so far this year. So it's not like the MSRPs are being reduced materially for all vehicles. It's because they're yeah. actually lowering the uh, the transaction price through incentives and more more um, uh, aggressive negotiation. Well, in the old days, you know, five years ago, um, incentives from the manufacturer made up about eleven percent of the trans of the transaction price, and that number dropped down to about two percent during the pandemic, and that number's back up to about five point eight, close to six percent today. That number is going to continue to go up and get closer and closer to that 11% number. Just like we're seeing inventories continue to build. Um, the in new car inventory for the month of April is estimated to be at 2.831 million. Okay? That, that's up well above where it had been this time last year. I would not be surprised come... May, June, July, that those inventory levels are at or in excess of 3 million new vehicles that are going to be available on a, on a monthly basis. So as all that happens, dealers have to lower the prices, the manufacturers have to increase the incentives, and hopefully the buyers see the bargains or relative bargains, um, and, they, and they pull themselves back into the market. But yes, timing is going to be everything this year. I, I just had a conversation with Justin for an article that he published. Um, you know, well, why do you think used car prices are going to go down? Because I think new car prices are going to go down, and there has yeah. to be a spread between new and used to make the used appealing. And so it'll it'll force used car prices down to some degree. Uh, it, it's a matter of timing. It's a matter of patience. If but you again, have I want to time. Wait, if you don't do the best. Yeah, but I want to be clear, Dad. The deals again, because I've got I see like theme park. What is this nonsense? Sales went up, yes, but again, pull the onion back. Pull the the um, pull the onion back. Hold yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're you're peeling the layers of the onion. Go ahead. 
yeah. peel the layer of the onion back. Inventory yeah. levels are through the roof. And I hear you loud and clear, Dad. The deals are going to get better. The deals are going to get better. Folks, we're on the start of a downhill trend for card prices. You know, Kelly Blue Book, lowest level in the past two years. The only reason that we see sales gains is because of fleet sales and also because of, uh, I'm going to say, some gamesmanship of the numbers. Consumers are waiting. Consumers are absolutely waiting to try and get better and better deals. I will say, yes. those deals are out there. The, the community forum, we have a success stories channel, Pops. I just want to pull it up so everyone sure. can see. This success stories channel demonstrates all sorts of things like, Look at this Corolla Hybrid LE, Dad. $26,224 MSRP, $26,800 out the door. That's that's pretty a good deal good. today. That's a good deal at the end of the month. That's a good deal at the end of this <clears> year. <throat> so like, I don't want everyone out there saying, okay, I have to wait until December 30, you know, 30th to go pull the trigger. Like, There are deals out there. And I, I think this is a snowball going down a, down a mountain. I, I got an email today from a from a follower who he who asked did I do did I do okay did I do good he he got a he got almost seven percent off on a brand new Subaru Forester okay um, that's incredible and, and Subaru is is one of those as you showed when you were showing inventories their day supply is has gone down not gone up so. To get seven percent off on a on a brand of vehicle whose supply is limited to begin with, gives you a pretty good indication that there are deals to be found out there. Now, not every dealer is giving the money up. Not every dealer is smart enough to just take a deal and move on with life. I, I get that, and you know maybe in your neighborhood, in your neck of the woods, you just have a bunch of dealers that are stuck in in the past and they're. They're not going to budge off their pricing. Shop outside of your neighborhood. Okay? Go elsewhere if that's what it takes. Because you will find dealers out there that are amenable to taking less as long as you're taking home a new car. Or a used Again, car. Like Rio asking, is Toyota's price going down at all? Yeah, definitely. Could you imagine this deal? During the height of the inventory shortages, Karina literally got this deal after a month and a half of watching our videos, researching local inventory, contacting various dealerships in my area, digging into the deep holes of Reddit, right? Yeah. I mean, this deal was not available, Rio. This is on a on a 2024, uh, what was it, a Corolla Hybrid LE with the yeah. convenience package. I mean, the out-the-door price on this, because sales tax last time I checked in California is close to 10%. I mean... Out the door is twenty six eight on a twenty six thousand dollar MSRP car. Like this is a hell of a deal. Yeah, you're doing good. There's you know there's not that much markup in that car. Um, so you you know this this is a dealer who who looked at at their inventory building up to some degree, not as big as it used to be, but bigger than it has been inventory wise. And they've said to themselves, you know what, better to better to look at them in customers' driveways than to keep seeing them out on our on our red driveway. So some dealers are just more aggressive than others when it comes to, to moving the metal. They, they, it makes more sense to make a customer than not. It, you've relieved yourself of a floor plan expense. Mm -hmm. You've created an opportunity for your finance department. Hopefully you've created a future customer for your parts and service departments. So there are benefits to even taking a short deal on a Corolla LE hybrid. Um, the more customers you can make, the uh, ultimately the more money they can, they can spend with you. I know we're focusing on new cars, but I will show one example of a used car as well. This was from uh, about a month ago. Thank you to the car. Thank you to Car Edge for quality education resources, calculators, and buying strategies. I just purchased a 2020 Infinity QX60 and only left about fifty dollars on the table. Out the door, I negotiated three thousand dollars off the internet price. Plus, the extended warranty was offered at four grand for three years, and I negotiated to two grand for four years at a higher service. Level. Like it's happening. All the data, all the points, with the exception of all the data and all the points, with the exception of automotive news talking about how Q1 sales, you know, have gone up for the industry. All the other data points suggest that the market is softening significantly and will continue to soften. We went through a two-year period of being a, a, a seller's market mm -hmm. to the nth degree. Yes. 
we're in the first inning of a game that'll probably go to extra innings of how it's going to be a buyer's market to the nth degree. That's what all the data points, uh, for me at least, show. Yeah, as inventories continue to build, it, it, it will become a buyer's market again. It, you know, it's, it's one thing when there's 900,000 new vehicles available monthly um, for sale, okay? The, the, that's a seller's market because there's, well, way more customers than the 900,000. When yeah. your inventory levels are approaching 3 million again, okay, the tide has turned, especially when you consider the cost of financing those 3 million vehicles. Can I ask you a question, Dad? Is it slow in the summer? Like, are dealers slow in the summer? We're going to jump to the chat here, and we'll, we'll, we'll spend more time there in just a second. But, like, are the summer months slow, or are they um, busy? Well, you know, in March, things normally the spring selling season was starting. It was like somebody hit a, a light switch at a dealer at, at our dealerships that I worked in. Uh, the summer can slow down a little bit. Um, and the reason it slows down is kids are out of school. Uh, families go on vacations. Yeah. Um, so, you know, discretionary income um, gets set aside for those family vacations. And then, you know, suddenly before you know it, it's August and it, what is it? It's back to school time. School. Um, okay. So then discretionary income has to go towards uh, back to school stuff. And, and then, you know, September rolls around, everybody's back in school, you know, and the new model year cars start rolling in. So things start picking up again. Uh, but yeah, the summer can be slow because, you know, kids are out of school and families are doing family things. Um, I'm wondering if there's opportunities there, like this summer, especially. I know, I know, I hear you on end of the year, and trust me, I'm preaching it as much as you are. December of this year is going to be bonkers. But I wonder if, like, during the slow months, slow time, slow weeks in May and June and July and August. If you work at it, you can always find a deal. Now, now, you know, I've, I've said that. And then there's certain vehicles you're not going to find a deal on because they are in such short supply that there is deals relative deals relative a deal is relative. I mean, when they were in such such short supply and dealers were asking fifteen thousand dollars in additional dealer markup and people were paying it, and today maybe you could get it at MSRP. Um, that might not seem like a deal, but it is a, it relative to what it had been. It's a hell of a deal. So. It, it's it's all about patience. It's all about timing. It's all about working it. Uh, very rarely does somebody come into a dealership and do they drive home with a new car that day or a used car that day. So you you have to remain patient and diligent. Uh, that that's the key. And 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 if you can't get the number you want in your neighborhood, in your neck of the woods, stretch your neck of the woods. Yeah, you know. definitely. I will also, I'm going to do the, the free promo for us where we have the car buying service. You can also give that a try. Uh, that is also an option. That being said, Dad, let's talk about used cars just for a minute here. Yes. Is the used car market effed? Because I was really just framing tonight's show around the new car market and the real insight there for those of you that have joined since we've been getting going. The real insight again on the new car market is that while the sales numbers look pretty, the inventory numbers look bad. You peel the onion, you know, peel the layers back of the onion, and you can see that things are not nearly as great as they might seem on the new car side. What's going on in the used car market? I wasn't available <laughs> earlier this week to talk to you about CarMax earnings. What, what, like the Rich. profit going down 27%, revenue going down? Like that's a bad look for the nation's largest used car dealer. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it indicates that it's, that it's a bit of a slog at the moment. Um, you know, obviously the cost of them carrying their inventory is, is fairly hefty. Um, their average gross profit per vehicle sold went down. I think it was $61 a car and go, well, $61 a car is not much, but when you times that by 172,000 cars in a quarter, um, that adds up to a lot of money. Um, so yeah, I mean, there are issues, there, there are issues getting good quality cars, used cars. Um, some of them are still overpriced. Um, and I, I would, you know, some of it, some of the, that downward movement could be 
you know, how many how many EVs do they have? Did they sell? Did they take it in the shorts on? I've got some data on that as well. Hey, before we go further, Dad, can yes. you do us all a favor? It looks like there's a beautiful sunset behind you. Yeah. Wait, what so happened can, to you? I can remove myself, right? I'll yeah. remove myself so you can take full screen. You want to go pull the curtains real quick? Like, can we see the sunset? It looks beautiful. All right, let's look at the sunset. And no, that's not a green. I'm going to see how dirty my windows are. Oh my God, the sun is just, it's right there. It's a giant orange ball. It is just, it's a wonderful time of year at the Jersey Shore. And it's even, it, it's, 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 it's even warming up a little bit. That that was fun to watch. That looks I'm weird. sure it wasn't, but whatever. You know, I, I try to make it as entertaining as I can. Big giant ball of sun. You didn't get the eclipse the other day. I did. All right, we're gonna come here to the chat we've got from Rich. Yes, Mulatto. Thank you, Rich. Do you accept the Lord? Oh my God! Come on, Rich. What is this crap? <laughs> Thank you for the contribution, Rich. <laughs> you, you know, uh, I might not have gotten as much of the eclipse, but you didn't get nearly as much of the uh, earthquake. No, I did not get that. And, and if I, make, you know, some, there's there's a crack in one of the mirrors above my sofa, and, and a piece of, of mirrored glass fell out of that yesterday. Not from the earthquake. Uh, no, because they were working on the building, and they were shaking the building that way. <laughs> Chris, chances of finding a 2024 Land Cruiser under MSRP? Uh, you you know you know the answer to that question uh, while you were typing it. Uh, <laughs> I think you're going to find a Land Cruiser yeah. under MSRP for a yeah. long, long yeah. in Japan. Yeah, well, Japan, I'm not even probably there. good. Yeah, I don't know. I think I, in Japan didn't they just get rid of the wait list on that like at the end of last year or something? I, like that? I don't know. You know, but yeah, yeah you ain't know, getting one of those under MSRP for you know it could be two three years. I mean, the Siennas are still not really, you know, they're at MSRP, and that's a good example of a vehicle that's produced in much higher quantity, Chris. But thank you for the contribution. Godspeed on your journey. We've got here from Self. Self yes, is back and still in the market for a Mercedes C63S. You know, at one time, at one time, Self, I will say this, and 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 Zach will probably hate me for saying it, but that that was the car Zach wanted in life. You know what car Zach ended up with? None, none. He has he has no car. Uh, <laughs> Just but, understand, it is going to be incredibly expensive uh, <laughs> to own that vehicle. The Mercedes vehicles, the we talk about it on here all the time. They depreciate, and the cost of ownership is quite high. Earlier in the show, Dan from Sheru, Sheru, thank you for the kind super sticker. There we go. Oh, and the chairs sliding back. Oh, this is you know, pull it back in with your with your with your thighs right just tighten those thighs up and pull that chair back in okay there we go oh my god <laughs> yeah i'm rolling the wrong direction again <sighs> you get such a kick out of that nice i do man <laughs> um for those of you that are new to the channel, when we get super stickers, my dad does that little dance, and he considers that to be his exercise for the day. So if you want I, you to know, see my I'm dad thinking, exercise, I'm which I do. I'm thinking of upping my exercise. You know, and, and just between you and me and, and a few of our friends that are listening, I've put myself on a diet um, so that I can drop a few pounds before we get to Puerto Rico, where I'll, I'll add all the pounds back on. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like you. Let's keep going here in the chat, Dad, from JFlow. Did what you preached and saved thousands. Great info, guys. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Love to hear it. That's why we do what we do. From Elliot, yeah. why is my car insurance going up? Let's talk a little bit about car insurance, man. And car insurance, auto insurance rates are up significantly more than inflation. Almost as much as, do I have it? Do I have it pulled up? Yeah, I do have it pulled up, actually. Car price, or excuse me, car insurance inflation is almost like, you know, uh, <clears throat> Stellantis MSRP inflation. We keep track of car price inflation. Yeah, I think, back I think insurance is up like like 25%. And, and, and honestly, I have no idea why. You know, because I got to believe there's more people like me 
growing older, who drive less. Um, I, you know, and mine keeps going up. I, you know, I, I, I don't get it. I will say that some, some not so nice neighbor of mine opened their car door into mine, put a dent like that big, scraped the paint off the door. Yeah. Bested. (laughs) (laughs) And didn't, didn't say a word to anybody, leave a note or nothing. I'll tell you, some of the people that live in my building should be ashamed of themselves. Car insurance prices have gone up significantly. I think as yeah. a result of labor, you know, uh, pr- labor costs going up, um, the cost for parts going up. Yeah. I, I understand that the manufacturers for the past couple of years have been building nothing but expensive stuff. Okay. And so that's one of the reasons why average transaction prices have gone up because they've been building nothing but expensive stuff. Um, but I can't believe that there's enough of that really expensive stuff on the roads that it should cost everybody 25% for their insurance to go up. Uh, I, I'm just, I, I'm having a hard, I'm, I'm having a hard time with that because I, I just keep thinking to myself that, well, maybe, maybe, maybe perhaps the insurance companies are just trying to be a little greedy to make up for some of the natural disasters and everything else that they've had to pay. Bill- and and so they're sticking it to us. OK, it's it's like a lot of food has gone up big time, but the cost to the to the producer hasn't gone up as much as the price has gone up Their Their profits have gone up dramatically. So it's it's not like the prices always going up are reflective of yeah. of inflation. Many times it's reflective of the greed of the seller. Just saying, just saying. And I don't know if that plays into automobile insurance or not. No, of course it does. As the prices of the vehicles get more expensive, it's a justification to increase the prices of everything associated with with the vehicles. I I, I see it. I get I get where your head's at with that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where my head's at. You know where my head's at. I have to turn down my hearing aids just a tad. Just, just turn down your hearing aids, man. Just a we've tad. got here. Not a we've lot. got here from. You hey, good? Go yeah, self again. This says my hearing aids aren't even connected. Son of a. These pieces of poo, I'll tell you. <laughs> I don't know how he's heard me the entire So you were going to turn your hearing aids down. Yeah. So your hearing aids aren't even connected. Well, they're on. Trust me, they're on. But, you know, it's saying maybe it'll connect now. Who knows? What the I just want to turn them down a touch. There's a little too much uh, uh, highs and and. Son of a, there we go. Okay, let's just, there we go. I turned it down a tad. Say something. I was just going to let everyone watch you try and troubleshoot your hearing aids. Well, I can't hear a thing you said now. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, can I ask you a question? What, what, what kind of enjoyment do you folks get out of watching an old man? <laughs> struggle with my hearing aids my chair rolls around when i do my chair dance i mean i just self we'll be we'll be right back self i think just the timing of this is appropriate so oh god here we go yeah 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 get out man a screen almost yeah (sighs) okay here we go you know, can we take it easy, folks? I'm trying to make it to the vacation. Okay, you keep all this nonsense up. I, I just, I might not make it through tonight. Oh my goodness! Uh, all right, let's help self. Another out here. super sticker just popped in. Son let's of a help God. self out here. I, I want to. <laughs> okay, self. Thank you. What is the average percent off we should get on a used car? I hear somewhere between eight and ten percent. Let's talk about this. How much markup? Is typically in a used car. We've I, I've talked about a ten percent rule in the past, things like that. But I mean, a car dealer is going to make a decent amount of money on a used car. That's why they're in the business of buying and selling them. How much should you get off? I think that depends on a few things, and then I'll let you give your answer. How long have they had it? How much have they already reduced the price? Things along those lines. 
you could, I think it's safe to imagine there's anywhere from five to 10% markup in any used car that's being sold out there. So use that for, you know, vantage point. Is there? I, d- I don't know anymore. I don't know. Well, in I today's know. market, there's probably a lot that are underwater by five or 10%. Because Very well could time, be. But, uh, yeah. You know, it's, I, I, I do believe uh, if you, if you, especially if you look at CarMax's earnings and they're the largest purveyor of pre-owned cars in America. And if their average profit per car has gone down $61 and it was somewhere around 2250 bucks, um, you know, that that's really not a big spread. If if you know if if you're selling a forty thousand dollar car and you're making twenty two hundred dollars, um, that that's not a that's not a particularly big spread, but it does point out how how ridiculous it is for Carvana to say that they're making like sixty five hundred dollars per car. <laughs> true, true, but there's still a spread there. I think it's very reasonable. There's, there's to be a negotiating. spread. There's yeah. there's a spread. I you know. It, it depends on the car, but I mean, we used to typically price our cars. There was somewhere around twenty five hundred to four thousand dollars profit built into the asking price. Would we take less than the asking price? Well, when we when it wasn't a one price store, we would. I mean, you know, cars have been negotiable for like ever. So, it but it's hard to say. Not every dealership works on. Yeah, you know, look at our friend Brandon. You know, he makes like fifteen hundred hours a car. <laughs> so, how much can you hope to get off? Yeah, but I think for most used cars, like around the average transaction price for a used car, which would be thirty grand somewhere around there, you should imagine there's three thousand dollars of profit built into it, which is fine. These dealers need to make money. That you, you negotiate, though. You know, your your buddy uh, Tyler, who was on the other day, said it best. If you're prices are already the lowest in the area and they can tell that from v auto because v auto is a tool that dealers use to help appraise cars and to help price cars and it follows your competitive sets all around you so if you're already less than everybody else and like he said you know we advertise our best price so at some yeah. stores, the best price is the advertised price. At other stores, obviously, you can go in and you can negotiate. But there's there's no True. hard and fast 5 to 10%. It's Yeah, I hear you. But also, the best price, advertised price, is complete bull crap. And you and I both know that because then dealers add on all sorts of stuff. We'll come to Jim here. Somewhere. Yeah. Jim says, shop, th- Jim, thank you. Shopping for a Chevy Colorado today. They uh, told me all of them include a thousand dollar low jack and $300 flashing brake light add on remove low jack, but they wouldn't remove the light. That's the crap that makes advertised car prices complete BS. There's all sorts of added accessories, extended warranties, things like that. You have to ask for, you have to contact 15, 20 dealerships for the same car and ask for an out the door price and then compare that number going based off of the online advertised price is just a, a, a going to end up yeah, being, and, and you being know I, I mean there was a time i when i worked at dealerships and we added low jacks to every car okay and 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 we would never never not sell a car because the customer didn't want to pay for the low jack okay I, i'm not i'm not losing a car sale because i added something to it that the customer didn't want um now now there are dealers out there that go well at least pay my cost on that you know, and the cost on that low jack might be 200 bucks or 250 bucks. Okay. The cost on that, that blinking brake light, you know, might be $75 or a hundred bucks. If I, I would never lose a deal over the accessories that I put on a car because yeah. the customer didn't want to pay for them. I would try yeah. like hell to get them to pay for them. I, you know, I don't, I, I don't want you to think I just bent over just like that. I mean, but I would, I would do my best. And if I couldn't get them to pay for it and it was going to keep me from selling the car, I would eat the cost because I was the moron that put it on the car. All this talk about negotiating. I do want to ask everyone, if you are someone that is interested in negotiating cars and helping people get a good deal, we are hiring for our team under about click on careers right down here or go to caredge.com slash careers. Our team is growing. We need help with certain 
roles in particular as our car buying service continues, our concierge car buying service continues to grow. We do need people to join us and assist with that. So let's keep moving, Pops. We've would got. It, would it be okay if I don't apply? No, you don't have to. Apply. You're <laughs> okay. good. You're on the team. Um, puke bucket. Thank you, yeah. Puke Bucket. Oh, what a All nice the thing. current mid-sized <laughs> trucks, extended cab, tiny bed. Why no extended cab and long bed? Anyone else think that's weird? They used to make them. I, don't, I haven't really noticed it. I, this is not an observation for that I've that I've had, but I, I'll take Puke Bucket's word for it. He, he or she seems more knowledgeable than I am on this. Uh, well, you know, because, uh, I don't know, the, the manufacturers want to make a full-size pickup truck because it's got a greater profit margin for them. You know, also... Something that's going through my mind, just thinking about it, the extended cab, tiny bed. That's yeah. because people that buy pickup trucks aren't actually using them for work. They're like glorified yeah. SUVs for many yeah. of them. Well, you know, like buy a Santa Cruz if you if you want a if you want like an extended cab with a short bed. There you go. Get a Santa Cruz. You, you know, what can you put in that? You can't even fit a full size sofa. Come on. <laughs> We've got from Patrick here, how much will Toyota take off of Crowns or the Grand Highlander? Two total opposite ends of the spectrum. Grand yeah. Highlander, you're getting a little bit under MSRP, maybe. Depends on powertrain there. Crown, 7%, 8%, 9%, 10% off of MSRP. Yeah, Huge the, the, discounts off of MSRP. Yeah, the, the, the Crown has not been a success. I don't, I, I don't even know if it's a success in, in Japan, but it certainly has not been a success here in America. There you go from space, $5,000 <clears> off on a crown. So yeah, that's got to be what? More than 10%? Eh, Some, somebody 10%, 10%, somebody yeah. wants me to, to say, it's just inconceivable. It's it's inconceivable to me that, that a manufacturer who is so on top of their game like Toyota could come out with a product like the crown. It's just inconceivable, but that nobody wants to buy that damn thing. But if you're looking for a bargain, ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking for a Toyota that you can get a lot off of, well, you got to think about that crown. Yeah, go. exactly. Go look at the crown. Speaking of which, everyone can enjoy the sunset. And my. Yeah. Okay. What do you think? I broke out my summer t shirts again. I'm just, you know, hoping that it's, that it'll stay warm enough that I can continue to wear these. T-shirts look good. I got one yeah. more for you. The sunset's really gorgeous, man. You, it, it, you know, that is one of the nice things about the view of my condo. It faces the west, so I get magnificent sunsets here. Um, and I have actually, I think, at some point in time, maybe posted some of those sunsets on, on Instagram. It is just, it's it's pretty spectacular at times. In the winter, oh God, in the winter, it's not nearly as spectacular because I'm freezing my ass off and the sun goes down at 4.30. Okay. I'm done. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. No more super stickers tonight, kids. <laughs> Jeez. You know, I told you I put myself on a diet today. I, I've hardly eaten. You have me spending <laughs> all this energy. I've had two bananas and a bowl of soup, for God's sake. <sighs> what? <laughs> you, 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 you go on a diet to gain back all the weight in Puerto Rico, and you've had two bananas and a bowl of soup. What are you doing? I'm trying to lose a few pounds before we go away. You know, I don't want to lay on the beach and have people go, look, a beached whale. You have know, you walked? Come on. Have you exercised? What? Yeah, what the exactly. hell do you think I do on this show? I mean, that's all I do is you know, I'm bouncing the whole time. You know, boom, boom, boom. No, I'm going to start doing that, too. Really? Oh, yeah, I think so, yeah. Walking's good for your body, man. I've heard that. I've heard that. And for oh. your mind. Walking's good for your mind, too. Okay. Okay. I like that. What else is good for my mind? Helping Sam Whiskey. Sam Whiskey, okay. thank you. What's the cheapest new car worth buying? Before we answer, before we answer, before we answer. Yeah. I'm going to pull up some data on this for you, Sam yeah. Whiskey. So we're back to this article on new vehicle uh, transaction prices dropping to their lowest level in nearly two years. And I want to scroll down to this section. Let me zoom in for us all. Consumers have fewer affordable vehicle options. The industry vehicle mix 
and focus on luxury continues to make uh, continue on luxury continue to make affording a new vehicle more difficult for the average consumer. In March, of the roughly 275 new vehicle models available in the U.S. market, only eight had average transaction prices below $25,000, and only two transacted for less than $20,000. The discontinued Kia Rio and Mitsubishi Mirage remained the two most affordable vehicles in the U.S. last month. In March 2021, for perspective, more than 20 vehicles transacted routinely below $25,000, including seven below $20,000. So just sharing that data with you, Sam Whiskey, and buying some time to answer your question. Cheapest new car worth buying. Do you have perspective on this, Dan? Um, well, I know Nissan, the Verse is cheap, but you know Nissan's been known to have some issues. Um, you know, a Nissan and a manual transmission, the, the Verse and a manual transmission, I think would be a, a good buy. Um, you, you know, I have uh, obviously... A Toyota Corolla, um, Chevy Trax. You know, I, now I know every time I say the Chevy Trax, I, I get bashed for it because, you know, I'm going to see in the in the chat in a second. Oh, the three cylinder turbo, that piece of that crap. Okay, okay, maybe, maybe if you don't beat the hell out of them, they won't be. I don't know. Um, I think the Trax. I think the Trax is a good option. I think obviously going the Toyota route. Makes sense. And yeah, the Versa with the manual transmission. If you can drive a manual, find a Versa. That's a not that's a good that's a good option. That that that'd be a cheap way for you to learn how to drive a stick. Well, cheapest, but yeah, it's still not cheap. It's still still a car, still 20 grand. But there you go, Sam Whiskey. Hopefully that helps you out. Those are some cheap options, cheaper uh price point options in a market where there are not many cheap options. That's there's eight. pretty shocking data. There's eight. There's eight cheap options that normally transact at twenty five thousand dollars or less. Yeah, that's not a lot. And the two that transact below twenty grand are discontinued. <laughs> What's that? Hey, you? Jim. Good to see you, Jim. Thank you for being here. My new truck got T-boned. Oh no! Oh wow! One month old. This now will be on the Carfax for life. Should or could I be compensated for depreciation? Yes. They're already lowballing the body shop on estimate to repair. Love this question, Jim. Everyone, listen up. This is a hugely important concept that my dad. It's it is explain. called it is called diminished value, okay? Um, it, it, this, I'm going to say something common sense, and the, and the insurance companies are going to hate it. As a customer, will you pay the same for a car that's never been in an accident as you would for a car that's had, I don't know, $15,000 worth of body repairs done to it? Uh, I think most people are going to go, I'm not paying the same amount for the one that had $15,000 worth of body repairs. And the only way you can sell that vehicle is at a significantly lower price than one that had never been hit. That's called diminished value. Now, if the accident wasn't your fault, and I'm pretty sure it wasn't if you were T-boned, um, then that, that insureds company should pay you diminished value. They're going to fight you tooth and nail. They don't want to do it. Okay. Some policies exclude it, but you need to look into it. And there are organizations out there that specialize in yep. working with people to get them the diminished value after their vehicle has been in an accident that was not their fault. Yep, diminished value, and there are professionals who just do diminished value claims work on behalf yeah. of consumers. And this is different. I see a couple comments coming through. Have gap. This is different no, than gap. No, this is different it, than gap. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it, like T bones. The, the, the Jim's the vehicle that was T boned wasn't totaled. It's being repaired. Okay, gap insurance would come into play if your vehicle was totaled and the insurance company is paying what the value of that vehicle was had it not been totaled. And the gap insurance covers the anything that would be still owed on it that is is above what the insurance company would pay. So this one has different. nothing to do with the other. Diminished yeah. value is how much the value of your vehicle has gone down because somebody hit your vehicle and damaged it. And there, like, there's a real legitimate reason why people do this professionally. Google search 
diminished value claims agent. Something good should come up eventually. Or there's probably some YouTube videos. We should probably do some YouTube videos on it. The reason that it takes a professional is because you have to know how to work with the insurance companies and you also have to create a case for support for what your vehicle's diminished value now is, like what it right. would have been worth versus what it is. It's 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 a it's work. It's a serious I, amount of I work to get a claim to go through. For, I used to write letters for customers. You know, I mean the insurance company wanted to pay X. Well, X doesn't cover how much money they just lost. And, you know, one of the things that I used to state, if, if, if a car's had fifteen, twenty thousand $20,000 worth of damage, well, guess what? I have to price that 20 to 25% below one that's never been in an accident in order to encourage somebody to take that risk. Okay. So there's real life example of, Hey, here's one that we could sell for, for 50,000. Um, but because it had $20,000 worth of body damage, the only way I might get somebody interested in, in it is to sell it at $40,000. Well, there's 20% swing right there, okay? And and you should be entitled to that if, if the accident wasn't your fault. So there. So, yes, I used to write that, those letters all the time, um, and sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. Nick. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Opinions on Mustangs. I've only ever owned Toyota Camrys and I have no idea what to expect from buying a Mustang. Are dealers willing to come down? Yeah. Camry to Mustang, man. Whoa. Yeah. It's, a, I mean, they're completely different type of vehicles. Um, here, here's, here's in my mind, here's the big difference. The Toyota has been a very reliable the Camry, a very reliable vehicle for like, I don't know, a million years now. Um, Mustangs have been around for 60 years now, um, but it's a Ford. It, it, you know, it, it doesn't have, it, it, it's, it's not of the same quality of fit and finish uh, as, as the Toyota. And it is typically more expensive to maintain and oftentimes gets recalled more frequently than a Toyota product would. So, there, you know, it's it's hard to it's hard to quantify that type of question. Because um, looking, looking for opinions, personal opinion. What was that? I said a lot of it's just personal opinion. Exactly. Yeah, but they're very, very, very different. Camry, oh God, yeah, they're Mustang, incredibly different cars. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah We've absolutely. got from Baron of Gray Matter. Ooh. How does one go about buying a non-normal car, like a Jaguar F-Type or an Alfa Romeo uh, 4C, when the dealerships are far too proud of them price-wise? That's a well, great question because you used to you ran a mini dealership and you would have some really interesting minis that were like one of ones nationwide. Guess what? Yeah. You're going to pay for them. You know, if somebody wanted to buy it, you were going to pay. Um, and and so if you're talking about limited type of vehicles. What, what leverage do you have as the buyer? The, the seller's got all the leverage. It's not like, you, you know, you can say, well, I want an Alfa Romeo 4C, okay, and there's 3,000 of them out there because there's not. Um, How many do you think are out there? Let's do a quick search. Not a lot. 30 maybe, if there's that Let's many. See. We said, um, so I'm going to the car search. It was an Alfa... <laughs> for those of you that can't see it it says 18, 18 alpha romeo 4 c Forces nationwide as used cars so i mean you know what type of leverage as a buyer do you have when you know we're a country of 330 million people you would you you would think it would be relatively that there should be more than 18 people that want those cars there might not be, but, but you but you would think there should be. If I had one and I had somebody interested in it, I would do whatever it took to get rid of it. It's a cool looking car, man. Oh, it's a great looking car. It, it is. You know, there's one problem with it. It's an Alfa Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> there you but go, Baron. Great looking oh, car. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we've got from David here saying, can, can diminished value come into play if a deer runs into your car? Well, you know, I think, well, it could, but you're, you're, if you don't have, 
um, diminished value as part of your insurance policy, and, and a lot of ins insurance companies don't include it, um, then no, uh, you know, you're, you're just going to be pissed at the deer because the deer didn't carry insurance and didn't give you <laughs> and didn't give you the insurance information before the deer ran off. I will comment. The sunset is now seemingly completely gone, it's but just, that, it's we... the light from my, you know, it, but it, no, it, no, it that's really... the light, but still the yeah. colors behind you. Oh Very yeah. Beautiful. It's no, it, it really is. When the sun sets here, you've been here in the summer. It's just absolutely gorgeous. You know, no, it looks really nice. This is from the we guy who drives a Mini. Yeah, I drive a Mini. Yeah, you, 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 you pick on me because I drive a Mini. From Dr. Link. Looking to buy a Tesla Model Y. Thank you, Dr. Link. Is it worth it? With the federal tax incentive for $7,500, what do you think? Yeah, I think definitely. Could, I, think could, of the I think it could steal a used one for next to nothing, for God's sake. Yeah, used Tesla prices have gone down significantly, so there's a case to be made to buy a used one versus getting a new one. But yeah, take yeah. advantage of the federal tax incentives. It's just money in the system. Why not take advantage of it? Yeah, you know. But but yeah, if if you want brand new, yeah, there's nothing wrong with a Model Y. Is that what we drove in Detroit? Yeah, a Model Y. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, the, the only thing wrong with it's the fit and the finish, but the the technology and the software is pretty pretty flipping incredible, and yeah. and it's surprisingly um, it doesn't have a whole lot of room for three people in the back seat. No, um, it doesn't. But I, we, I should comment EV prices. So that article that we were referencing earlier has an entire section here just dedicated to EV prices, and they are both for new and used electric vehicles. Uh, EV price. Here you go. Actually, yeah. glad that I pulled it up. EV prices for new cars increase in March, according to Electric Vehicle Transaction Price Day. The average price Americans paid for an electric vehicle in March was fifty four thousand and twenty one dollars, up from fifty three thousand seven hundred and seven dollars. But that's down year over year, nearly ten percent. Used EV prices are absolutely getting hammered. So new EV prices are kind of flat, up a little bit. Used EV prices are absolutely the depreciation is absurd it is you know you know i didn't hear from from uh, justice today he was going to go with a friend to check out the new lucid showroom that was opening up in his area and they have this incredible lucid lease in california um for like 600 and some dollars a month for like a, a lucid pure um and there you know there's so many incentives involved that you know, he was thinking, well, I want to see it. I want to drive it. And maybe if I get one for 600, I'll, I'll say goodbye to my Tesla. I don't know. Uh, I, I haven't heard from him. I haven't, you know, I, I asked him to text me or send me a picture when he, when he drove home in his new, uh, in his new Lucid, but apparently he hasn't done that yet. I will share with you while I pull up the CarEdge.com website. I will share with you, dad, a voicemail from one of our community members, Phil, he called in and he let us know that he got a great deal on a Dodge Hornet and he actually volunteered to wow. either do a phone interview or come on the show with us and talk about why he chose to purchase a Dodge Hornet, kind of like the Lucid. The price finally got right for exactly. some of these vehicles. Um, obviously, that's what we do here at Car Edge. But there, there we go. I listened to Phil's voicemail and then I called him back. I said, Phil, congratulations on your new Dodge Hornet. He was stoked. He was absolutely I stoked. I, you know, I, I, I said to justice, I said, how could, how could you not want to lease a lucid for, I mean, I, I, I mean, let's face it. If I leased one, if I, and it gets like a 500 mile range. Okay. So if I had them at a hundred percent of charge the day I took it and with the amount of driving that I do, it's an 18 month lease. I might have to charge it one time in the 18 <laughs> months before I bring the damn thing back to them. But I mean, it would be. You know, we saw Lucid down here. At that the is shorts. financial suicide, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're going to drive a thousand miles over 18 miles a year. year. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm All up right, to 7,300 miles now on my car. From Seabrew. Thank you, Seabrew. If yeah. money was not an option, what vehicle would Ray and Zach own? I would hmm. own an Audi RS. What was it? An RS8 Avant? RS6 Avant? Yeah. Yeah, we 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 in on our Ray and Zach channel at one time, we did auto reviews, and we rented an, an Audi RS6 Avant, and that car was a hundred and thirty-five thousand dollar car. 
And I have never fallen so deeply in love with an automobile automobile in my life. So, like, if I hit Powerball, I have to buy a ticket first. But if I did <laughs> and I hit it, okay, you know, the second thing I do after I would call my kids and go, you won't believe this, but your father just hit the Powerball, um, is I would run over to my closest Audi dealer and place an order for my RS6 Avant. Okay, and I wouldn't give a damn how much it cost. <laughs> and 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 would you ask for the out the door price? I wouldn't even care. <laughs> <laughs> I would just buy it and know that that one of my one of my neighbors is going to open their car door into mine and put a dent in it and not. Save Igor's it. son. Igor's son drives an RS six Avant. Pops. Oh my! I love that car. I mean, I have, I have never been so moved by an automobile as I was at the, the fit, the finish, the ride, the handling, the, the just, it was just, it, to me, it was just the most phenomenal vehicle. I'd, and, you know, and I've been in some Ferraris and, and some souped up NSXs and stuff, but my God, what a great vehicle that was. I would, yeah, so, so, so if money was no object, and thankfully it still is. Um, I would, I would, that's the first, the second thing I do is, is run up to Cherry Hill, uh, New Jersey to the Audi store and buy their RS 6 I, I love that for you. Hopefully we can make that happen for you yeah. someday before, uh, before you, uh, you know, before I pass away. Thank yeah, you. Thank well, you very much. Yeah. Where the hell were you going with that? Hey, we hope we can make that happen before you die, dad. Hey, we're going to do everything in our power to, to make that happen before. Well, you kick the damn bucket, you old guy. Well, that, that's really sweet. Thank you, Zach. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was bad. Um, <laughs> I think yes. I've never driven one. But I think I would probably do like a Porsche, like a 911. I think that'd be me. You think? I think I think that would be if money was no option, probably. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm I'm sticking with the Avant. I, I I'm telling you that was that was the that was funnest so cool. the funnest test drive we ever did was that car. Here, I'll pull it up so that if people are curious, yeah, and we and we cool. did. We did some some crazy ass cars. We did a Corvette. We did a uh, Ford Mustang, a Cobra GT. What a piece of poo! Um, we 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 did a what was it? An, was it an M3 competition or an M5 competition? So these videos are on the internet. We my dad and yeah. I, um, our second channel, Ray and Zach. Um, we used to do podcast episodes called Advice yeah. from My Dad three yeah. years ago. Well, and then we put ago. one car review over on that channel, and it was this uh, Audi RS6. It was uh, what an unbelievable car. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. yeah. And I think I described the uh, back wheels. You know, the, I said, look how wide they're. They, it's like it's got child bearing hips. I, it was just like, yeah, just, it's I just a beautiful automobile. Well, well said. We've got <laughs> T. Griffin. Thank you, T. Griffin. Just got back from getting a new to me used 2021 Chevy Blazer with the V6 and 28,000 miles for $27,000. Congratulations, yes. T. Griffin. Hopefully we were able to help you in some small way. And congrats on a purchase. Yes. And a job well done. Yeah. Use it in the best of health, as I like to say. Can you talk about the four square? What about the four square? What do you want to know? <laughs> the four square. It's the oldest way to sell a car in the car business. Oh, just tell me what part hurts. Is it the trade amount that hurts? Is it the price? Is it the payment? Is it the down payment? I mean, you know, and, and really all they want to do on a four square is, well, keep you on the payment. Okay, well, if I can get that payment down to 450, would that work? Well, how long? Don't worry about how long. If we get it down to four, can you come up with the five grand? It's just you know the, the four square it's a is just, tactic. It's just a, an old school way of trying to sell a car, as opposed to like a new school way of trying to sell a car, which is to just be transparent and share all the information up front. Hundred yeah. percent. All right, folks, that is a Saturday night with us here at Car Edge. If we can help you out, CarEdge.com. We've got all sorts of various tools, services, resources, the whole nine yards. Go check it out. 
And yes, my dad and I started Car Edge about four years ago now. So oh, thank you to four everyone. Four and a half years. Started. Four and a half years. You know, my our first YouTube video dropped on, I think it was December 30th, 2019. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it had like, well, maybe one or two views. Um, and now it's got well over a million. Um, <laughs> And and there's one of them, I forget which one it is, but there's there's one that's rapidly approaching three million views. Wow! Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you everyone that supports yeah. us. We really um, we really appreciate it. Um, yeah. Means the world to us. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for y'all. So thank you. And yeah, we've got mind the drift saying I remember the yeah days. Yeah, yeah I remember yeah, the yeah the, days. The fastest the fastest growing Swedish software company. Yeah. <laughs> Let's quiz everyone. Do you remember us from our name pre ya? Because you know, as a twenty-eight year old enterprising entrepreneur, I thought we should have three different brand names in those four years. Yeah, why um, not? Yeah. Why not? Why yeah. not? Um, I like the car edge name personally. I think that's the right. But we've landed on car edge. We've been car yeah. edge for a little over a year and a half now. I think car edge is the right name. What do you we mean a little over a year? Is, I guess it's yeah, it'll be July that we uh it'll be two years that we that we got the company. Yeah, that we acquired yeah. Courage. Yeah, but yeah. it switched in like January of twenty. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, so it's yeah. been about fifteen months. There we go, Karina, your auto advocate. That was the OG name. Yes, yeah, way, way way back when. But kids, yes. double check trademarks before you start a YouTube channel. That's your friendly reminder. All right, folks, tune in on Monday over on the Rain Zach channel. We'll be there. Thank you, everyone. That's a part of our community. Dad, it is completely yes. dark behind you now. It is. Well, that's what happens. The sun sets over the course of an hour and six minutes. Yeah. You know, can I, can I tell you something? Yeah, we would like to hear. Do you realize, like, the solar, like, our planet yes. is, like, doing this. It's, like, rotating. Well, this would, I don't know. It's, like, it's, stuff's rotating. Yeah. Yeah. That's assuming you, you think we're the, the planet's round. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And we're hurtling through space. I think it's at like yeah. 6,000 kilometers per second or something like that. Well, I, you know, I don't feel it. <laughs> I read that last, yesterday. Actually, I saw yeah. a video on, on uh, TikTok. But, you know, yeah. I, and it was like explain. It was like, that's wild, man. Yeah, yeah. That's why some people just like to believe the flat is Earth. I mean, the Earth is flat, and you know you don't have to you don't have to worry yourself with all this stuff. <laughs> Dude, we're hurtling at six thousand kilometers. All right. Good night. Yeah. I love you. Imagine, Thank you. Imagine, you imagine if you were to fall off. Oh yeah, my exactly. God, the landing would pretty much kill you. Yeah. <laughs> good night, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, everybody.